Surely Bitcoin is some kind of bubble. But each time it crashes, it always comes back stronger. We're going to discuss the double spending problem and the Byzantine General's problem and how blockchain solves both of these. Remember, you can't have diamond hands if you don't have a diamond mind, which is why you need to learn how this stuff works. In the last video, I explained how asymmetric encryption is used to send messages that no third party can view. So now I'll explain the block in blockchain technology. But before we start, make sure you're ready to learn. Get your thinking cap on because your attention is very valuable. And if you choose to focus it on understanding this, it will help you make better investment decisions. Let's start with a hypothetical example. Let's imagine that Pepe, Wojak, and Fiolina want to trade cash for goods and services. The government issues 21 units of value that they can exchange amongst themselves. They're trading the money back and forth and Felina claims that she has 12 units of value, but Pepe and Wojak each have 9.5. Fiolina's claim implies that she has 10 more units than the total supply they agreed on. Because the currency is issued federally, Pepe can ask the government to confirm whether Felina is telling the truth. Now, since the Roman Empire, this is how currency was issued. But what if Pepe and Wojak and Felina don't trust the government and want personal sovereignty? With a ledger, they can track their own dollar system without any bank or federal intermediary to mint or print the currency. They decide on a total of 21 units that they can exchange amongst themselves. Imagine they're trading the money back and forth, and Fiolina claims she has 12 units, but Pepe and Wojak each have 9.5. Fiolina's claim implies that she has 10 more units than the total supply they agreed on. Wojak and Pepe both ask each other how many units they have, and by this they know how many Felina has. It's clear to both of them that Felina's claim is fraudulent. Before computers and internet were invented, this would have been impossible to manage at a large scale. Imagine Chad has one coin. He wants to spend this one coin at the blacksmith. The shopkeeper would need to check with all the townsfolk to confirm a transaction was legit before accepting it. For most of human history, it was easier to just accept coins minted by the government. Computers and the internet allow for nearly instantaneous messages. Now the blacksmith can broadcast the message to check the transaction and almost instantly get replies from the townsfolk. Sounds great, but there's a new problem. This is called the double spending problem. While the transaction is waiting for confirmation, Chad could run out of the shop, go across the street to the baker and ask to buy a loaf of bread with his one coin. The one coin transaction goes into that same pool of unconfirmed transactions. You might think that everyone with a copy of the ledger would simply see which transaction came in first, kind of like you sort files by date on your computer. However, there's no one computer or server that confirmed Chad's first transaction. The townsfolk need a way to agree on which transaction is legitimate without trusting each other or arguing about which transaction came in first. This is where blockchain mining can solve the problem of double spending. The townsfolk each work on a math problem. The person who solves the math problem first broadcasts their copy of the ledger. As each of the townsfolk solve the problem for themselves, they agree that the first guy to solve the problem was correct and his copy of the ledger is correct. This is called proof of work, and it keeps the blockchain secure for everybody. Many of the nodes on the network are anonymous and use encryption to protect their internet. Using a VPN to encrypt your connection is especially important if you're into cryptocurrency. Sometimes you need to use a centralized service like Binance Bridge, but your IP address is in a regulated location. You can use Private Internet Access VPN to change your IP address to anywhere in the world and get past those annoying blockades. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider. It's 100% open source and the code is public so that anyone can take a look under the hood and examine it. They never record what you do with the VPN or store your data. And this policy has been proven in court multiple times. 
It blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites, and works with all major streaming services, so you have unrestricted access to all your favorite content anywhere in the world. It's also one of the few VPNs that supports peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and torrenting. Private Internet Access is currently offering a three-year subscription with two extra months free for only $2.08 a month. That's 83% off. They have 24-7 live chat support, and it's risk-free because there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's a link in the description if you want to join while the sale is active. Okay, let's get back to understanding blockchain technology. If there's one thing that will really help you understand Bitcoin and blockchain, it's the Byzantine Generals problem. The Byzantine Generals problem is probably the best way to understand Bitcoin once and for all. The Byzantine Generals problem was unsolved until Satoshi Nakamoto invented blockchain. Um, if you can grasp the Byzantine Generals problem and how it works, you are going to have diamond hands. Imagine you have a city uh, with generals all around it. Okay, and they need to all attack at the same time to to take the city. If they don't attack at the same time, they will fail. They have to coordinate. It's kind of like when you're with your friends and you're going to do a little speed race on your feet. So somebody says, go, and then they run, and then you're like, oh, shoot, and then you have to run too. If you've watched Mr. Beast's videos, he does this like all the time just to mess with people. So a low trust environment, how do you get people to all do something and all agree on something in an environment where there's low trust or no trust. So you've got these generals, right, surrounding the city. They all have to attack at the same time. If they don't, they all get screwed. And they're sending these encrypted messages back and forth to each other, but they don't know who's being honest and who's not because it's all encrypted. So like, it, it, say one of them says 12 p.m. We go at 12, guys. Another guy is like 4 p.m. and 3 p.m. How you solve this problem is they all go to work solving a math problem. And then when one of them finds the answer to that math problem, he broadcasts the message to all the others via their encrypted channel. So every time the math problem is solved, which is, it varies in difficulty, and it's pegged to be about 10 minutes. That adds a new block to the chain. Each time the problem is solved every 10 minutes, right now, people are working on these blocks to make sure that they're legit. And this changes everything. When you realize that right now in front of us, as you listen to this, blocks are being added to the chain every 10 minutes, at least for Bitcoin. There are some blockchains that are much faster. Um, and this, when it was first invented, completely revolutionized money because we had a way to decentralize the ledger and peg it to this immutable chain that was constantly be confirmed and updated, solving the problem of synchronization and knowing who was telling the truth. Okay, I hope I made blockchain a little bit easier to understand for you. I'm not going to go any further on this. You'll have to do some of your own research. Just know that Bitcoin blocks are confirmed roughly once every 10 minutes, and one block represents one confirmation. One block would give you about a 1% to 2% chance that it's a fake block, and by the time you get to three confirmations, three blocks, you're statistically probably fine. But, but six is where you want to be safe. If you have like a multi, multi, multi million dollar transaction, you want to be super sure you'd probably want to wait for six blocks to come through. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and make sure you follow me on Instagram if you want to learn more about the other stuff that I'm doing because Lord knows I have not been active on this YouTube channel in the way that I used to be, although I may, I may collaborate with Dank Bank to make some seriously dank memes again. But for now, you have to wait. Follow me on Instagram. I'll see you soon.